Ancient Greek mythology is an appropriate setting for an action RPG like Rise of the Argonauts, since the concepts of item acquisition and character power-ups are rooted in the classics. Other games like God of War are borrowed bits and pieces, but a game specifically focused on Jason and his quest for the Golden Fleece is great to see, particularly when the game itself tries to do a few things differently. <laughs> Yet Argonauts is an odd game because it doesn't quite know what it wants to be. The game is an action RPG hybrid, but both sides are a little too streamlined to be fun for either kinds of fans. Across multiple locations, enemies will spawn in arenas with invisible walls and you'll hack at them with light and heavy attacks and dodge and block when necessary. You can change Jason's weapons between sword, mace, and spear during a fight, and these weapons have special attacks and can be upgraded to do things like break enemy shields faster or do more damage. There is, however, too much emphasis on powering up the fighting system's most basic moves, which, while enjoyable at first, gets pretty tedious as the game wears on since it makes it feel stale and unflexible, despite all the customization options. To mix things up, you can assign four active abilities to Jason, such as dealing out extra damage or turning enemies to stone, but each of these powers takes a while to recharge, so they never really take center stage. It would be better, perhaps, if the standard enemy types had more interesting attack strategies, but the fighting is overly straightforward. Most everyone will die with the same two or three button presses, and the passive abilities that power up your character reinforce the system. It's weird that you're given lots of options for fighting, but you ultimately don't really need to use them. The game does provide some variety when it comes to boss fights. Argonauts has pattern-based bosses where you have to figure out the trick to taking them down. This does break the monotony, but it doesn't really salvage the overall gameplay. The character upgrade system is unique, though. There are no experience points to deal with. Instead, you get achievements for things like killing 15 enemies, breaking a certain amount of shields, or completing side quests. Once you accomplish one, you can then dedicate that deed to one of four gods, namely Ares, Apollo, Athena, and Hermes. With each of these gods can be purchased different abilities, and the system fits very well with the whole Greek mythology theme. You can also get new weapons that increase your damage resistance or enhance your attack power, but again, they don't dramatically alter the core of the combat system. Another issue with this is that while you do power up, it's difficult to tell exactly how. This was a deliberate choice to streamline the RPG elements, but there's too little sense of your character changing, something people who really like to customize and shape their character will likely find annoying. Part of this is due to an emphasis on a HUD-less game trying to provide visual feedback during combat, which in some cases is a neat idea, but in others, like forcing you to constantly check a map through your pause menu, can cause unnecessary hassles when trying to complete missions. The most interesting part about the game is the storyline and the focus on dialogue. Those interested in Greek mythology will get a kick out of it, for sure, as there's quite a bit of talking to explain the plot and expand the sense of character. There are extended dialogue sequences with Mass Effect dialogue trees, and it's interesting to see how all the characters interact, though some of the dialogue can get pretty stale at times. Watch yourself, Zeno. This isn't Thessaloniki. You can also choose responses that will align you more with one of the four gods, but ultimately these don't really feel like they have much of an impact on how events play out. In terms of graphics, there are some genuinely pretty areas here, and the stylized character and weapon designs are nice, but there are also technical issues, like frequent frame rate dips and a problematic camera. It seems Rise of the Argonauts tries to appeal to everyone and ends up compromising itself in the process. People who like RPGs will want more in the way of customization, and people who like action games will want a tighter, more responsive combo system. Argonauts gives neither extreme, instead offering an awkward genre mix with a rocky combat system and occasional sequences of throwaway dialogue. Jason really deserves a great game, and it's clear that some solid ideas are whirring beneath the surface of Rise of the Argonauts, but they don't really come through in the final product. For the full written review, head over to IGN.com.